We are rolling all the way to Chicago right now, and I won't even tell you how many running shoes I packed. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna be in the doghouse. All right, let's roll. Probably see you somewhere in, um, let's call it Iowa. We'll see you at Iowa. Oh, everybody, we made it to Chicago. Crazy 15-hour car ride with the kiddos. We crushed it. We crushed it. We drove through the night, and I actually feel pretty good right now. And yes, we're at sea level in humidity. I can't remember the last time I ran a sea level, so I'm going to go out, get my run in. And uh, But I am watching the channel right now on a big screen, and as a YouTube creator, it's really beneficial to see the footage see what it looks like on a bigger TV. And this is not the question of the day, but if you watch the channel regularly on a TV, just let me know down in the comments because it's, uh, it's the future, frankly. Like, it's just, that's the, the trend line of viewership on YouTube continues to go uh, in the direction of big television screens. So it's good to see it back there working. And yes, the vlog published as we were driving this morning. Okay, um, I brought some shoes with me on the trip and we're here for a wedding, by the way. Uh, which is tomorrow, actually today when you're watching this. And before I came out, uh, the Hoka Rincons had have 49 miles on them. So I missed it by one mile back in Denver. So we're gonna take the Rincons out for my full review. Can't wait to tell you my thoughts on these guys. But first, I wanna show you the shoes that I packed. And I don't know how many I'll actually be able, be able to run in, but uh, all right, let's, let's, here we go. Well, this is a little strange, not being in the studio here in the hotel in Chicago. And on that note, I think Chicago is in a little bit of a heat wave right now. I did zero filming on the run today. I frankly wasn't sure if I was gonna make it back alive. I was dripping with sweat so bad and I had to run at one o'clock in the afternoon because the rest of the day is packed with family activities. So anyway, it was insane. So I didn't get any more B-roll shots of the Rincon for the full review. Just wanna let you know that it was insane. But I will say this much, because it was so hot and I was sweating so much, the shoe did really well in hot temperatures as far as uh, keeping my feet fairly cool because of the breathability, uh, but I'm just gonna, you know, I'm not afraid to go into detail here. It also allowed, I think, it felt like it allowed the sweat to, of my feet to get out of the shoe. I know that's a little more, too much detail, but uh, it, so as far as a hot daily training summer shoe, the Rincon might work for you. And I'll begin by saying the Rincon, and yes, it is pronounced Rincon. I was corrected after the first impression. It's not Rincon, it's Rincon. It's a road shoe from Hoka, neutral. And I'm gonna put it in the plush category for that midsole cushion, not moderate. Uh, I believe Hoka on their website has it in the moderate category. This is pretty plush and we're gonna dive into the stack height right now. 32 millimeter in the heel, 27 in the forefoot. 27, that's pretty high for a road training shoe. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Is it a road, is it a training shoe or is it a racing shoe? And yes, uh, I'll just say now keyword versatility because I wanna talk here in a minute about how I plan to use the Rincon moving forward. But that creates a five millimeter drop from heel to toe, that 32 and 27, uh, which is pretty much spot on for where I like to be. Uh, maybe a little low, but who it that midsole is feeling really, really nice. But before we get to the midsole, let's talk about the weight of the Rincon. This is exciting, everybody. 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams. That's impressive and that's men's size nine. And then on the screen right now, that is my sizing and the weight. So we're looking at a really lightweight training shoe from Hoka. Uh, that's just impressive. Now, how do they pull that off? I think it is, it's, it's a combination of a couple things, but mostly it's this single layer mesh that again is very breathable, very lightweight, nimble, or I should say malleable, it's very malleable, almost too much. If you like a little more of a lockdown feel through the toe box and the midfoot, eh, you might want to double check before buying this shoe because it is incredibly malleable, but I don't feel 
I didn't feel um, like my foot was slipping around too much because the upper is so lightweight and yes, malleable. Just moving my fingers over it right now, like there's nothing to it. Uh, but it, anyway, I wasn't swimming off of the shoe or sliding off of the shoe. And for that midsole on the Hoka Rincon, you're looking at a full compression EVA midsole with that, med, you know, what Hoka is known for, that meta rocker technology. Uh, basically, it's how they blow the foam into the shape that it is. And if you want to visualize that, think of a, a rocking chair out on your front porch and how the rocker goes heel to toe, heel to, well, it really goes heel to toe, toe to heel. But think of that motion of heel to toe, heel to toe. And it's an early stage meta rocker. And the Hoka is basically claiming that that allows you for better uh, acceleration. And I'm not going to argue against that. I would say I could accelerate real nice, uh, off, whether it's off the line or simply picking up the pace in the middle of the run. So it was feeling pretty fast, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But so far in this midsole, it's comfortable, it's cushioned, and I'm not. No, it does not have pop. Okay, pop is different, um, but it it uh, it feels fast because it's lightweight. And again, I think that meta rocker feel if you can get your gait cycle and foot strike into the rhythm of that um it felt nice it felt even today even though i didn't film today it felt in fact today i dropped down to about 6 30s for a couple miles and at 6 30 pace uh i was just cruising just now i'm at sea level so it felt real nice but uh that is the midsole on the hoka rincon so hoka is known for a very wide platform or landing area you can see it there right it's very wide i would say kind of the opposite of nike especially through the midfoot uh nike's pretty narrow at least on the outsole uh, footprint and this this outsole is very very wide to allow for a, um i guess they would probably claim a more stable ride and i'm not going to argue against that um and then they're placing this rubber in high impact area so this yellow on the bottom here and in the, the heel as well uh, but I'm getting reports from folks out there like you who are saying that not even at 100 miles, the outsole on their Hoka Rincons is breaking down. And I'm at 55 miles, and I could not agree more. I'm seeing abrasion. I'm seeing wear and tear. Nothing is like ripping off, but well, no, that's not ripping off yet. But I'm seeing all, only at 55 miles some pretty significant breakdown on that outsole. So I'll come back to that in a minute, but just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, yeah, but it feels good. I mean, it feels nice on the ride as far as stability goes through that outsole. For the fit, I went true to size as far as the length from heel to toe, we're good there. But I did post a photo on my Facebook page of my foot inside the Rincon and somebody noticed, I didn't even notice, but somebody noticed my pinky toe kind of poking out the side of the Rincon just a teeny tiny bit. And I didn't feel, I don't feel it on the runs, but through this, uh, through the, the forefoot, through the toe box, my pinky toe is sticking out just a little bit. So something to be aware of if you have a really wide, uh, a wide toe box or wide toes, uh, keep that in mind through this upper, it might be a little too narrow for you. And for comfort with the Hoka Rincon, really comfortable, comfortable upper, comfortable midsole. We've already talked about that. However, major issue here, Hoka. Come on now. Give us a little more insole action. Look at how thin that is. I mean, this is like, this is like something, this is almost like a napkin at a restaurant. Like, come on, Hoka, what are you doing? Just add a quarter ounce of weight to your running shoes and give us a little more love and attention with this insole. So what I have done is gone out and purchased this um, Spenco cushion. It's just this green cushion you can pick up at most uh, running shoe shops and you just lay it underneath the, uh, the insole and slide it in just to give the shoe a little more cushion. So that has helped a lot, but I'm just like, Hoka, what are you doing here? Give us a little more here with this. So as far as comfort inside the cavity of the shoe, it's struggling just a little bit because of this insole. And for my positive and drawback or negative, the positive, versatility. And yes, versatility is gonna be the key word because I think you could go long run, you could go tempo run, you could go easy day run. This shoe 
appears to be very, very versatile. I would feel very comfortable going on a long run, going at, not, a, not a threshold, okay? Not, it's a little too soft through the midsole for a threshold run, which is faster than a tempo run. Uh, but for tempo, easy, you know, and then if you just want to bop along, this could do the trick for you. And then the drawback has to be the durability of the outsole. And honestly, probably even the upper. I've had issues in the past with Hoka uh, with their uppers breaking down, especially through the toe box. But, the okay, it, it, a little tip of the day for buying running shoes. If you... Um, if the shoe is is really lightweight, especially daily trainers, it probably means you're going to be sacrificing a little bit of the durability of the shoe because the materials are lighter, which oftentimes means they're going to break down a little quicker. So keep that in mind. And for that price, $115. That's amazing. That's perfect. I'd pay, I'd go up to $125 on the Rincon. But 115, I think is spot on. I think it's a great value at that price. And I'm gonna go 7.75 for the score, almost an eight. I almost went eight, but I'm gonna go, which is a good score for me. 7.75 out of 10 for the Hoka Rin Con. And the question of the day, what has been your most versatile running shoe that you've ever owned? Can you think back? Maybe it was in the last uh, 12 months. Maybe it was 10 years ago. I have a couple in mind. Actually, I'll just toss it out there. I think the, well, yeah, I think the Beacon was is pretty versatile. I tended to use it more for an easy day shoe, but I know some folks that used it for uh, long runs and even, even racing marathons in the New Balance Beacon. So anyway, what is what has been your most versatile running shoe of your life? I know that's a big open-ended question, but that'd be awesome if you could hit it up down below. Thank you for being here in the makeshift studio here in Chicago. And uh, we're off to dinner hopefully soon because I'm starving after that 15 mile or 15 hour drive and the run out in the crazy heat and humidity. But it is fun to be at sea level, I must say. And uh, I just love you guys. Like this, the oh, show, yeah. I wish, oh man, uh, <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just tired and I just wish, I wish I could hang out with all the Chicago runners is what I'm trying to say. But this trip is really quick. I'm heading back to Denver Sunday night. And so I got to focus on the fam and, but I'll be back to Chicago. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, you all are the best. Seek beauty, work hard. Good job.